back with me then. I'm again in the car talking to you, having just uh, been at a meeting, and one of you, a young guy called Darren, looking to join the service, or one of the services, uh, wrote to me an email and said, hey Tim, I hear there's new platforms coming in that I'm gonna have to train on, um, in elementary and basic flying training. I wonder if you can talk to me a little bit about them, and of course I can, Darren, because I've just been at the meeting where we have discussed you. No, we didn't discuss you. Metaphorically speaking, we did, of course, because you're one of the new future of the Air Force people that are gonna come through. However, comma, we did discuss the new platforms, um, and they are awesome. They are a may may, as uh, some people will say. They are amazing, actually. I'm not joking. Um, I've flown in the Grob 120TP, which is gonna take over from the Grob Tutor. I flew in that in Bavaria. I'm a big fan of that airplane, actually. It's uh, very, very powerful. I think it's got about 600 shaft horsepower. A superb aircraft. You sit next to each other, so it's as if you're in a car next to each other. Um, the student will be on the right-hand side, the instructor will be on the left-hand side. It's got, um, it's just a pretty, it's got loads of tech in it. It's, um, it's got loads of ice, as it were, or, or basically, what is it, ipe, in-plane entertainment. So each, each uh, side, each cockpit has got a big screen in front of it, a big LCD. It's got to be the size of, I don't know, one of your biggest iPads, I guess, bigger than that. And it's uh, split in half um, horizontally. And on the top, you have your attitude instruments like your AI, speed, um, altimeter, that kind of stuff. And on the bottom half, you have any other data you want to put up there. It could be engine instruments, it can be navigational data, it can be your route line, waypoints, whatever. That's the Grob 120TP. Um, we're going to use up to about 10,000 feet. It has a retractable undercarriage, uh, which is a new one for, uh, for elementary flying training, so that'd be interesting. So let's not forget to put that down, because that'd be expensive. And it's going to be flying out of Cranwell and Barkston. And that'll be taken over from the Grob Tutor, which is currently flown at the moment. But the one we were really talking about today was the Beechcraft Texan T6C, or the Texan 2 in effect, which is the latest model from Beechcraft. A twin, uh, it's a tandem cockpit. It's about 1200 shaft horsepower, so about the same as a, a short staccato, really, but it feels more powerful. But it's got a lot of new things with it. So it's split flap, so not the whole of the flap comes down on the back of the wing. It's only the bottom half that comes down. Uh, it has a retractable undercarriage. Uh, you have to breathe oxygen, and you have to wear G-pants in it as well. And it has leg restraints to pull your legs in, uh, because it has ejection seats as well. So you're flying on ejection seat in that T6C. That's going to be based out of RF Valley. Now, we're gonna be getting 23 of the Grob 120 TPs. We're gonna be getting 10 of the uh, T6C Texan 2s. And those are gonna be, at the moment, based out of RF Valley, next to the Hawk T2 that, of course, I fly. So what you'll do is you'll come through EFT, if you go the fast jet route, that is. Uh, you'll come through EFT on the uh, 120 TP. We'll then go to Valley, and you'll be on the Texan 2. So the T6C, then from there, you'll stay at Valley and you'll be on the Hawk T2 before you go on to the Typhoon and the F35 because the GR4 probably won't be there. There's a lot of numbers coming out. So that'll be pretty awesome. You're pretty, some pretty good flying on those platforms there. And of course, if you go onto your multi-engine and rotary, you'll probably stop mid, uh, I believe, mid T6C or at the end of EFT, depending on the 120TP, depending where you're gonna get streamed. So that's something for future deliberation I guess so yeah both platforms both new platforms are bringing in are pretty awesome uh, the T6C then as I said retract under carriage as well very powerful and now you have three screens in front of you so three big iPads in front of you in the front cockpit where the student sits you've got three big screens and you've got a head-up display as well uh, which can you've got a lot of weaponry it can simulate in the airplane uh, you've got moving maps you've got data displays you've got present position indicators, waypoint lists, route lines, all that crazy stuff. So you should never get lost again, which is a good thing. You should never get lost again. Um, and we'll be looking at the syllabus for that today as well. And the things that we're talking about for the syllabus on the T6C is quite interesting actually, because you're running the Grob 120TP into the T6C, and that T6C is gonna bridge, from that Grob 120TP, it's gonna bridge into the, uh, the Hawk T2. So what of course we can do now is something called download a lot of training. So we can download training that's already been done on the Hawk T2 that the Decano can't do because it doesn't have such um, 
good at avionics suite. You can't simulate a lot of things like weapon, weaponry and that kind of stuff. So we're now saying, what can we take from the Hawk T2 and put down onto the T6C? Sort of things we're talking about today. Um, you know, what are we going to do at low level? Are we still going to be at low level? Do the front line actually go to low level anymore? And I've written an article on this before about low level, about when I was flying out on Red Flag. Have a look at that if you want. Um, I'll have to, it's one of the first articles. If you just Google Tim Fast Jet Red Flag, you should find that article. That's quite an interesting one about hiding behind rocks and running away and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a big electronic warfare joy, of which Red Flag is. It's a nightmare exercise. But what we're saying now is, is there a requirement, personally as a GR4 guy, I would hate to lose a low level environment, but can we make better progress and can we get more information into the student and make them a better pilot by not putting them in a low level environment, but keeping them in the upper air, doing maybe, I don't know, advanced radar concept stuff, um, maybe doing some, um, I don't know, maybe operational training maneuvers, um, maybe some more ACM, air combat maneuvering, basic fighting maneuvering, things where we would really, or, or pairs work, but in the upper air, you know, what are we doing at the moment with the conflicts that we're in, with not a low level? Now, I still believe that there comes a time when the safest place for you is at low level, so I'd hate to see it go fully, and that's where we're really talking with our training service provider about what that syllabus is gonna look like. But of course, the training service provider that brings this courseway in under the new UK military flying training system uh, has been employed to be innovative and to not have old guys like me saying, it's much better if we do low level, just because that's what we've always done. So they're doing some studying, they're going away having a think about it, and then we're going to see um, pretty much how those things are going to be employed. Right, what else? Yeah, so the T6C is going to fly a valley, uh, and at the moment, the, si the syllabus that you're going to be doing on the T6C is very similar to the Hawk T2 syllabus. The kind of things we're thinking though, are you going to be doing, remember this is not elementary flying training, it's basic flying training before you go on to advanced flying training on the Hawk T2. In basic flying training then, do you want to be doing air combat? Now, I know a lot of you out there that write to me and saying, I love the air combat, I love it, it'd be amazing. I'm sure it'd be a may -may. I'm sure it would be, but it's actually quite hard. Now, it's not done at the moment on the Takano because it's quite difficult. And also, when you start fighting turboprop aircraft against turboprop aircraft, you end up in like a little knife fight in a telephone box. It's not representative of the Typhoon or, or the F-35. And we need it to be representative of those two platforms because that's where you're gonna go. So is there any point really in doing air combat on the T6C Texan II? Or can we use those hours? Because we've only got a certain number of hours, remember, can we use those hours for something else? Can we take you down the air weapons range? Um, can we do some strafe attacks? Some time sensitive targeting? Some close air support? You know, what can we do? Can we do some more formation? Some tactical formation? This is the sort of thing we're thinking about. How best can we use those hours? Either way, it's gonna be a pretty good syllabus. Uh, there's a lot of synthetic stuff with it as well. There's gonna be a, a full mission simulator. And there's also gonna be a flying training device which is pretty awesome. So you're gonna be able to, well, you're gonna be able to practice these things before you go and fly them for real. As you probably know on the Hawk T2, we have two full mission simulators where you wear all your flight kit, G pants, LSJ, life-saving jacket, helmet, you get in there, big domes, we link them up, there's two of those. And then we have six what are called flying training devices, which are like your Microsoft flight sim, but it's with um, three big screens, they're touch screen, and uh, you sit in this kind of box and it's got the throttle and the stick there and everything's there for you to use. So you can use those any time of the day or night. It's a very progressive system, help you get your checks squared away, help you understand how to get into all the menus and select all the things that you need, your weapons page, your waypoint page, all that kind of stuff. So that's all there. It's gonna be very similar on the T6C. T6C is gonna be based on the south of the field. And the other thing we we're thinking about today and trying to talk about, there were guys from the, uh, the people that are bringing this aircraft in for us and buying this aircraft for us, guys like me, who uh, obviously fly the Hawk T2, but obviously I'm in requirement space as well, so I look after all the future fixed wing platforms. I look after the Grob 120TP, the Texan T6C, and also an aircraft called the Embraer Venom that's coming into service as well. That's gonna be based out of Cranwell in the multi-engine flying role. I look after those three platforms in one job I'm doing in the Air Force, and then obviously fly the Hawk T2 and teach some of the instructors and the students in the other job I do in the Air Force. That's why they pay me two salaries. They don't pay me two salaries. 
just so you know. Um, okay. Yeah. What else? Let's have a think, shall we? Yeah, so another thing we're thinking about as well, always thinking, what's the airspace going to look like at Bali? You know, what is it going to look like? How have we got enough space for these guys? They do operate differently to us. The downwind speed in a T6C, I think is about 140 knots. I'm downwind at the start at about 200 knots. Um, the climb out of this T6C as well is, is 140 knots, and I'm climbing out about 350. So you have, in a Hawk TT, you have these discrepancies. Where is the T6 going to operate? Where is the T2 going to operate? T2 can go a lot higher, of course, but the higher we go, the less we could do with the aircraft, really, um, insofar as performance-wise. It doesn't handle as well as we go up. So anything for us, really, above 20,000 feet, we're really just using that for transiting, okay? And we're not going to fight up at 20,000 feet if we can help it. We're going to fight in what we call block one, which is 10,000 and above to 20, 10 to 20,000. That's called block one. Probably going to fight the aircraft there because we want the thicker air. See, that's what we want. Now, the T6, is that, can that operate below us? Can that be down about 5,000 feet? If it can, good. Also, at low level, remember, this thing's going to cruise around in a cruise speed of about 180, I guess. And... Um, 180 to 220, something like that, I guess. And of course, we're cruising around low level at 420. So a lot faster. We're gonna maybe have to think about areas that they're gonna be using at low level if we do go into a low level environment versus areas that the Hawk T2 is gonna use. Personally, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. But the one problem we do have with the Hawk T2 community at the moment, especially on the later stages of uh, Four Squadron, where I fly, is that the bounce pilot, which is normally myself or some of my top guys, um, we call them Red Air, when we fight the students, we intend to use all of our fuel to maximize their learning experience. So we will run our fuel down, and we'll be 40 miles away from the airfield, and we're fighting at about 10,000 feet as a base height. And I'll be looking at my fuel, and I will get it as low as I possibly can. We take into account wind, massively take into account wind, um, airspace we want to transit through, uh, you know, what the traffic is going to be like at the airfield as we recover to it. And then literally, we're almost called a bingo recovery. I shut the throttle, call bingo, I normally call two minutes to bingo so the guys in the fight know. And then the guys will go home ahead of me if they've got fuel. And because uh, normally I'm at a higher power setting for most of the fight than the other two aircraft. And then I will cruise back uh, slow as I dare, trying to minimize the amount of fuel that I actually use. And I'll land a few minutes after them, but I will land bang on, or hopefully, you know, with 10 kilograms in hand, that's not much, that's half a circuit, that's not much at all. Uh, and I'll land back at Valley, having maximised my fuel. Now the problem being, of course, as we all know, because we're intelligent people and we have worked this out, is what happens if there's a T6 in the circuit and I'm rock starring in there in a T2 and he's downwind 140 knots and I need to get on the ground. Or if I'm coming in, I'm, I'm fuel priority, it could be an issue, okay? It could be an issue. Right, so that's the kind of things we're thinking about, just so you know. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what's going on. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.